Okay, good morning. We're going to watch another video today on 4.2. Um, and so let's get started. We're going to look at the six trig functions. And uh, you're most familiar with sine, cosine, tangent. Last year you learned a little bit about cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So we're going to review that a little bit. Okay, now depending on where the angle is, so if we're using this angle right here, theta, we would want to label the right triangle, and this these only work for right triangles, we would want to label it, so if this is the angle, then this would be the side opposite. The hypotenuse is always across from the right angle, and then the side next to the angle is the adjacent side. So then here's how the ratios go. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. And then these are called reciprocal functions. Reciprocal means you flip the fraction. Cosecant and sine are reciprocals of one another. So flip the fraction so that hypotenuse is on the top and opposite is on the bottom. Same thing with secant and cosine, they're reciprocals. So flip the fraction, hypotenuse would be on the top, adjacent would be on the bottom. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So adjacent would go on the top, and opposite would go on the bottom. So those are your um, basic six trig functions. Now, just to point out, if we were referring to this angle, let's call it alpha, if that was our angle, then the side opposite would actually be right here, and the side adjacent would be right here. The hypotenuse is always across from the right angle though. So just pay attention to where the, where the angle is located that you're referring to, and I would label the triangle just to keep things straight. Also, you're probably familiar with SOHCAHTOA. That's always nice and helpful. So this is sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, now if we were to put it on a circle where the radius has a length of one, the radius has a length of one, imagine this point could go all around the circle, but at any given point right here, in order to get there, you have to go over some x amount and up some y amount. So if we do all these trig functions with a radius of 1, sine of theta, and here's theta right here, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that would be y over 1, which is just y. Cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be x over 1, or just x. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that would be y over x. And these are all the reciprocals. So cosecant and sine are reciprocals of one another. Secant and cosine are reciprocals. And cotangent and tangent are reciprocals. Okay, now here's the other thing I want to point out. Sine is y, cosine is x. So you see how we've got our point right here, x comma y? x is cosine, and y is sine. So every point around the unit circle goes cosine comma sine. Um, the other thing here about tangent, you see how tangent is y over x? So that would be sine over cosine. And look over here, cosecant is 1 over y. That would be the same thing as 1 over sine. 
and secant is 1 over x, that would be the same thing as 1 over cosine. And then this would be cosine over sine. Okay. Okay, now in order to understand the unit circle, you got to remember some stuff from geometry. In a 45, 45, 90 triangle, where we're choosing this side to be one and this side to be one, they should be the same because if these are both the same angle. Um, oh, and you can't even really see it. I got to write it in. The, the ratio that 45, 45, 90 triangles have is that these sides are both x, in this case they're 1's, and this is x times the square root of 2. You just couldn't see that square root symbol. So if x is 1, it would be 1 times the square root of 2. Um, and let's fix down here on the 30, 60, 90. You can't see that, but that's the square root of 3. The shortest side is across from the 30 degree angle. The hypotenuse is always twice as big as the shortest side. And then the medium side is the short side times the square root of 3. So in this case it would be 1 times the square root of 3. Okay, now if we use our properties for 45, 45, 90 triangle, let's say that we were choosing, it doesn't matter, but let's choose this 45 degree angle. Then this would be the opposite. Here's the hypotenuse, and this would be the adjacent. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And we would fix that by multiplying by the square root of 2 on top and bottom. And we would get square root of 2 over 2. Same thing with cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse, that would fix into square root of 2 over 2. Keep those in mind. We're going to get to those in a second. Okay, for 30, 60, 90 triangles, let's start with the 30 degree angle. 1 would be opposite, 2 would be the hypotenuse, and square root of 3 would be the adjacent. The sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be 1 over 2. Cosine of 30 would be adjacent over hypotenuse, that would be square root of 3 over 2. Okay, now let's change perspective. Let's look at the 60 degree angle. Now the square root of 3 would be opposite, and the 1 would be the adjacent. 2 is still the hypotenuse. Sine of 60 Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of 60 would be adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be 1 over 2. Okay, so again, all of these things are going to come right back when we look at the unit circle. Okay, now, if you memorize this first quadrant, of the unit circle, then everything else will be symmetry. Um, think of this as the point one zero, and that would be zero degrees, and straight up would be the point zero one, and that would be at ninety degrees. Okay, and now I'm going to show you how to remember. 30, 45, and 60, how to get these points right here. Okay, now for all of them, they're all going to be divided by 2. All of them. Okay, and also on the tops, they're going to be square roots. They're either going to be square roots of 1, square roots of 2, or square roots of 3. Now just remember, square root of 1 is 1. So if I refer to a 1, I'm going to just say 1, even though technically it's square root of 1. Okay, so here's how, here's a trick. All right, pretend, take your hand and put your thumb straight up and your pinky, this is your left hand, your thumb straight up and your pinky 
out. So this would be zero degrees and this would be 90 degrees. Okay. Now, if we want to find this one right here, this is at 30 degrees. If we want to figure this one out, do you see how on the top, above the 30 degree angle, there's three fingers? So remember, square root of three. And you see how there's only one finger? Square root of one. Now go back to the 30 degree angle. This would be square root of three. And remember how I said square root of one is just one? That would be the point, the coordinates, at 30 degrees. Now let's do 45 degrees. So 45 degrees is when you bend your middle finger in. Again, here's zero degrees, here's 90 degrees. Now when we want to find 45 degrees, do you see how there's two fingers up here? So square root of two, and there's two fingers down here, square root of two. So now go back. These are both square root of twos. And then when we want to find the 60 degree angle, bend this finger in. Okay, now above it there's only one, and below it there's three. So then go back. This was square root of one, and this was square root of three. Okay, so just going back to this picture, See how there's three fingers above it and one below, three, one. Here there's two above, two below, two, two. Here there's one above, three below, one, three. Okay, so this is the first quadrant. If you can memorize this or do that finger trick to get this far, then everything else is symmetry. Okay, so if I did some color coding, let's see here. Mm, I'll use a pen. Okay, here's 30, 45. Oh, this is not working very nicely. Let me try something different. I just want to highlight it, but write nicely because writing on this board is kind of yucky. Okay, let's try this. There, that's better. Okay, so um, 30 degrees is going to be in red, and 45 degrees will be in green, and 60 degrees will be in blue. Okay, so I just am going to use the colors to show you symmetry. Let's get rid of this box. Okay, so with the symmetry, let's start with the red again. If you took the 30 degree angle and you reflected it over the Y axis, that would now be right here. Do you see how it goes square to three and then one? And over here, it's still square to three and then one? on the top I'm referring to. But the only difference now is that the first part is negative, the second part is still positive. It's a little hard to see, so I'll rewrite it in. Everything in the second quadrant is a negative comma positive because you have to go to the left which is negative and up which is positive. So you just you take these points in the first quadrant and basically copy them down but make the first one negative. So again if we reflect the 45 degree over the y-axis, now it would go right here. So see how that's square to 2, square to 2? Over here square to 2, square to 2, but the first one's negative. And then with the 60 degree angle, if we flip it over the y-axis, 
that would go.